Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Arizona Science Center today for our 1 p.m. live demonstration of our frog dissection. My name is Gabby, and today we are going to dissect a real frog and learn a little bit about amphibians, what an amphibian is, and some cool frog anatomy. So all about the inside, the outside of the frog, and how it works. So what does amphibian mean? Amphibian comes from a Greek word meaning double life double life. And one of the main features of the group of amphibians is that they can live on land and in water. So they, in a sense, live a double life. Now, amphibians include a large group of animals that have frogs, toads, and salamanders. And there's tons of frogs all over the world. We have 24 species that live here in Arizona. So even in the desert, frogs are able to live. And there's just under 5,000 species that live all over the whole world. So we're going to look today at a real frog dissection. If you get a little queasy, I won't be offended if you end the video, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to my frog so that we can make some observations and start to learn about the anatomy. Let's get started. All right, so here is our frog for today. I hope you guys are super excited to learn about this. There's lots of really cool adaptations about frogs and amphibians that are different from other animals that we might see around us. So frogs, you might have also heard the term toad. They are a little different. Frogs tend to have smooth and moist skin. Toads often have dry and warty skin. So a lot of toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. But they're all in the amphibian group. Now this is a full grown frog. They have a different life cycle than other animals. They start off as an egg, move to a tadpole, a froglet, and then a full grown frog like this. So they go through something called a metamorphosis. Start thinking about other animals that might go through metamorphosis too, maybe like a butterfly or some other organisms. So we're gonna make some observations about the external anatomy, the outside of the frog's body first. So you can see they're covered in skin, just like most animals. Now their skin is very, very special. Their skin is glandular, it's called. So it's kind of like um, a special gland. It's semi-permeable, which means some things can go in and out. Some things are allowed to be let in and out of the frog's skin. So if you've ever heard that frogs breathe through their skin, they kind of do. So their semi-permeable skin lets water and oxygen in and out of their body. That helps them essentially breathe and get more oxygen through their body. Some frogs also are poisonous, so they secrete toxins on the outside of their body. That's another uh, job of the glands. Something like the poison dart frog has toxins. Other frogs just release proteins, which help them survive and live in their environments. Now this is really cool, but this is also not so good for our frog friends because sometimes it allows them to get dehydrated easily because they can lose a lot of water. And then it also makes them susceptible to pollution and waterways. So it's really important for us to make sure that waterways are clear for our frog friends. So they are called a tetrapod, which means they have four limbs. You can see they have these two hind limbs, really strong for jumping. And then they have two in the front. Their back limbs, if you can notice, does anyone know what this is called in between their toes? So this is webbing. So they have webs in between their toes. And what might they use this for? They use their webs to allow them to swim through the water. So that's their aquatic part. And they also have to have toes and strong legs to allow them to hop on land since they are also terrestrial or living on land. Now on your head, they also have some cool features that you might see in a lot of other animals. Oops, let me, there we go. Focus that. So they have two eyes right on top. Their eyes have a small eyelid that can raise and lower. It's kind of like an eyelid. It's like a thin membrane. That's right here that I'm pulling on. So that raises and lowers to help protect their eye. They don't quite have ears, but they have this little membrane here. This is called a tympanic membrane. And if you notice when I'm tapping it, it kind of bounces. It's like a trampoline. This allows them to feel vibrations. That goes to their brain. They get sensory from that, and they can hear around them. They have external nares. So those are nose holes on the outside. They have one right here and one right here. 
And I specify external because they have ones internal inside their mouth as well. So we're going to take a look inside of their mouth, inside of their jaw. They have an upper and lower jaw. Now frogs do have bones like we do. They also have cartilage like what's in our ears and nose. So right up at the top of the frog, if you can see those two holes on the side, those are their internal nares. So they also have kind of inside nose. Uh, these two little bumps in between those, those are their vomerin teeth. So they're tiny little rough spots that are teeth that help um, break down food as they're bringing it into their mouth. And then along their jaw, they have really teeny tiny kind of sharp serrated teeth. These are called maxillary teeth. Now, if you start thinking about what frogs eat, you might see in cartoons a lot of frogs eat um, flies and things like that. And just like in cartoons, they do actually flip their tongue out. So this here is their tongue. Now, in humans' tongue, where our tongue's attached up to the front, the frog has their tongue attached. Or, sorry, our tongue's attached to the back. The frog's is attached to the front. So because of that, they can take their whole tongue and flip it out grab onto a fly or a grasshopper or a worm, and then flip it back into their mouth to throw it back down their throat into their esophagus. Now in the back of their mouth, they also have two cool features I wanna show you guys. If you can see this hole right here that I'm kind of putting my um, prod into, those are called eustachian tubes, and this leads right out to the tympanic membrane membrane. So this allows them to carry those messages into their head. And then right in the middle of their back of their throat there, that's the beginning to their esophagus. So that's where they're pushing their food into, down into their digestion. So their digestive tract is what we're going to talk about next and their internal anatomy. So what's going on inside of the frog? So I'm going to make some cuts so that we can look at the skin, the muscles, and then the intestines. So again, they have that glandular skin that covers their whole body. And underneath that skin, they have really thick muscles. So they can jump really, really far, right? We were talking about, you know, cartoons. They can jump really high, really far away. Um, in fact, most there's some species of frog that can actually jump 20 times their body length. If that was us, that would be us jumping uh, 98 feet, so pretty far. And because of that, they have to have really thick muscles in their core. So they essentially have a little frog six-pack here, if you can see that. Okay, so now that we looked at a little bit of the musculature, we're going to carefully cut to see the internal anatomy and the organs. So they have a lot of the same organs that we have, too, um, that do the same functions in digestion and in breathing. And we'll get to all of that in just a second. You can actually see, we're going to talk about the heart, but they do have a heart that pumps blood. You can see these veins and uh, arteries and capillaries that are helping pump blood through their body, especially to all of those really thick muscles that they have in their chest and in their legs. All right, so that looks good. I've cut away that. Now we're going to look at the internal anatomy. So they have a heart, just like we do, right in the center of their chest. Their heart has two atria at the top and one ventricle at the bottom. That's pumping blood through their body. Now when frogs are an adult, they have lungs to help breathe oxygen. So if you guys take a deep breath in, deep breath out, we have lungs too. So their lungs are located kind of in the back here. So if you see this little pink lobe, that's one lung. And on the other side, here's their other lung. Now when they're babies, this is different. When they're babies, they actually have gills as a tadpole, and then they develop these lungs as they become a froglet and then a frog. So they no longer have long, uh, gills when they're an adult like this. Moving on, they have some cool organs that we have too. So if you take a look at um, these really big lobes right in front, these three large lobes, these are the lobes of their liver. So one right here, one here, and one here. So those liver lobes help them kind of clean um, 
pretty much everything, clean through their blood, keep their body functioning properly. Right behind that, this little green bean right here, this is their gallbladder, which we also have in our body. Now, when they're eating food, remember, that goes in through their uh, throat, through their esophagus. Their esophagus is kind of behind all this heart and, and, and liver and everything. And that continues on to the stomach, which is this little bulbous um, vessel here. So this is their stomach where they're dissect, digesting their food, breaking down those flies and worms and grasshoppers and things. Uh, from their stomach, their food is carried all the way down through all of these teeny tiny channels. These are their small intestine tubes. So it gets carried through their small intestine. You can see all the intestines are connected with this really thin membrane layer. What is this? So this helps connect everything in their body cavity and keep it together. This is called mesentery. We have that too. So it continues through their small intestine down to their large intestine, which is this thicker channel down here. So the large intestine's job is to take the liquid out of their food. And if you might have guessed, the last step of the digestive process is to poop. So they release their feces through something called the cloaca, which is a small hole that allows them to poop, to pee, to lay their eggs, all of that good stuff. At the bottom, you can see this little kind of stringy, almost like a plastic bag. This is the urinary bladder. So that's where they hold their liquid feces. And then tucked in the intestines by the stomach is also the pancreas. So this right here kind of gets lined in between. Now while you're looking, you might be like, what the heck are all of these things? These weird wormy um, figures. So this is something pretty interesting, a cool adaptation. These are called fat bodies. Now these fat bodies lie on either side of the frog, right there and right here. And these fat bodies are energy storage for the frog. So this is really cool. They can rely on this if they're not getting a lot of food in their diet. Some frogs hibernate too, so they might need to rely on this if they're lowering their heart rate and um, not eating a lot of food after that. All right, so all of these are really cool um, features of the frog. Uh, this frog looks like a male. The males usually have a really fat thumb pad right here. So I did one earlier for the members, and that one was a female. She didn't have a thick thumb pad like this. And those are all really cool adaptations. Again, a lot that we have in our bodies too that we share with our frog friends here. Uh, frogs are very misunderstood too. A lot of them have different uh, myths that go along with them. So no, you can't really kiss a frog. It won't make you into a prince or princess. Um, some frogs are poisonous like we talked about. And since they also kind of breathe through their skin, you could also make a frog sick because if you have any virus, that can easily pass through their skin. Another myth is that you'll get warts from frogs and toads, but that's actually a different kind of wart. So we get warts from a virus, like on our fingers. Their warts are just part of their skin. That's not part of a, that's not caused by a virus. So frogs are super cool organisms that we get to share with on Earth. We learned a lot about them from their semi-permeable skin, their cool trampoline ears, their energy storage, their internal anatomy, and I really love the webbed feet. I think that's a super cool adaptation for our double-lived organisms. All right, so those are all the main parts of our frog that we're going to talk about today. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this frog dissection. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to pop those in the comments below, and we'll get we'll try our best to get back to you. Uh, check out our website, azscience.org, for more awesome science that you can be doing at home. And I hope you had a totally awesome experience with our dissection today. Have a great day, everyone.